First, let's take a look at the components related to boot circuit. U1000 CPU. This chip is maybe the most important chip on the motherboard. We call it CPU, Central Processing Unit. It's just like our brain to control every part of our body. Control our ears, our eyes, our hands, our legs. So it is responsible for overall control of the phone. U2700 PMU. PMU here means power management unit. So since it's for power management, it's just like our heart to keep providing power, energy to other components. It provides power supply for working of the boot circuit. U2600 NAND, or you can call it NAND flash chip. It stores data needed for the boot process like system and drivers. U3300 Charging IC It converts battery power supply into main power supply. We will introduce detail about this chip in the next page. Okay, next one. J3200 Battery connector In Canada, connector is just like a bridge. So here this connector, it makes possible the connection between battery and the motherboard. U3300 Boost IC It converts voltage when necessary. For example, if the voltage from battery is too low, then it will boost up the voltage to extend the battery life of the phone. Okay, so here, one, two, three, four, five, six. The six chips are the main chips related to the boot circuit, the boot process. So first step, we should have an overview about the chips which related boot circuit. Okay, a few more seconds later, we can go to next page, the boring and the tough page. Okay, are you ready? So let's come to next page. Three, two, one. Okay. So. When you first look at this block diagram, I will call it this block diagram. You see many blocks. So when you first see this, maybe get a little bit nervous, you're afraid of this. Yeah, it looks really very complex, but uh, don't don't be afraid of that. We just uh, we can learn together. Okay. So little by little, step by step. First. Um, for the boot circuit, we should think about how to start up, how to start your phone. You get a phone. So if you want the phone to work, first step, inside the phone, the battery should have some powers, right? Powers always come to the first. And second, it's a new phone. You just open the box. You want to start it up. So the second step, I think everyone knows. Second step is press the power button to get it start to work. Okay, so in this circuit, this battery connector is connected with battery. Then the power from battery through the battery connector then send out to power the whole circuit, the whole motherboard. Okay, and second one here, you can see power key. When we start the phone, we need to press the power button. That's why we put the power key here. Okay, here's some details. Okay, so <clears throat> let's come to the point to see how it works. So first step is PPBATTVCC outputted from battery. Okay, so this power is sent out from pin one of battery connector. Let's take a closer look at this connector. Okay. Is power sent out from the pin one of the battery connector. Okay. Since the power is sent out, it's outputted from the battery connector, so we can call it PPBATTVCC. Okay, so the power stops here. You can see, 
So what's what's next? Guess what's next? Then step two. They will generate the PPVD demand, but before that, they will separate into two branches. One branch is to send to the MOSFET Q3350. Let's zoom in to have a look. This is MOSFET. It's just like a switch for protection. Okay, and another branch it will send to the charging IC. Okay, so. Let's continue to see what should be the next. Next, the charging IC. Charging IC receives this power. If this power is within 3 to 4.3 volt, within this voltage range, it will send out an enable signal so that the MOSFET can get conducted and output this power. And at the same time, inside the charging IC internal, it will transfer the PPBTT VCC, then send out. Okay, so one set of power, another set of power, then they were integrated together and send out. So this power we call it PPBTT main. This power will be sent to the PMU. Okay, so PMU get powered. After PMU get powered, it will start to generate a PP1 volt 8 always power on this rear. Let's have a look. See it? Okay, zoom in, have a look. On this rear, they will always have a 1.8 volt voltage. I think that's why they call this voltage PP1 volt 8 always. Okay. Normally, the voltage will always be here. But Sometimes not. For example, when you press the power button, we'll talk about it later. Okay. So once this power generated, this power, it were used to power the crystal to work. Okay. You can see PP one volt eight volts will power the crystal to work. Step five is when we press power button. Okay. It's just like when how we press power button. It's a little bit fast. Let's have a look about this again, okay? Press, then leave. But normally we will press down for like three or five seconds, then release the fingers. So let's see what happens when we press power button. Okay, before we press power button, the voltage on this rear is PP1 volt 8, 1.8 voltage. And when we press down the, vo the power button, the power key, then these two points will get conducted, so it's, it is grounded. The voltage will drop to zero volt. After that, we release the finger, the voltage comes back to 1.8 volt. So this kind of modified sine wave we, uh, signal is just like a boot trigger signal. It will send it to the PMU. When the PMU receives this signal, PMU will get to work to power the other chips. And in the boot circuit, it's mainly used to power CPU and NAND flash. So next stage, let's see how the CPU and NAND flash works. Okay. And here, it will output many sets of powers. For a CPU, it will output around yeah, 15 sets of powers. Let's take a closer look at them. Okay. You can see the names. Let's check the powers one by one. The first one is PP CPU P core. The voltage range is between 0.625 to 1.06 volt. Second one. PP GPU. You can see the voltage range should be around 0.67 volt to 1.03 volt. Okay. As time is limited, we just go through the voltage one by one. Okay. Three. PP SOC S1. The power four PP one volt eight S2. Five. 
PP1Volt8IO. And this voltage is a little bit special. It's not only sent to CPU. Also, you can see there's another branch. It will also send out to the NAND flagship. You can see the name. Okay. Okay, step six PP1Volt1 S2. Seven PP0Volt7 VDD low S2. Eight PP0Volt SOC fixed. 9. PP CPU SRAM 10. PP GPU SRAM 11. PP DCS S1 12. PP 0 volt VDD QL S1 13. PP CPU E core The voltage range is around 1.06 volt Okay, almost finished the last one, PP one volt two, LPADC. Okay. Let's come to see the power for NAND flash chip. This one we have mentioned it before, PP one volt eight IO. Okay, second one, PP zero volt nine NAND flash chip. Okay, the third one, PP three volt NAND. Okay, so here, different chips they require different powers. Just like different people, they need different, they can earn different money, salaries. Okay, let's come back to the CPU. Actually, the CPU working condition is similar like PMU. It's always follow the sequence, power, clock, reset, control, and data, something like that. So for CPU, when the power fulfilled, the next step is the clock. The clock is generated by the crystal. Okay, so step seven, the crystal one three, uh, one thousand will start to work to generate the frequency, the clock for the CPU. Okay, let's take a look at this component, this chip. Okay, so after that, a reset signal will send out from PMU to CPU, so that CPU can to get initialized, initialized. Step nine, then CPU will be ready to work to get the data from the NAND. So how to get data? Here is through the PCIe interface. PCIe is just like a kind of highway bus to extract data from NAND flash chip to CPU. Okay? After the get, get the data like the system and drivers, then CPU will also get the key components controlled by the I2C bus. Step 10, CPU will control the PMU. Okay, also step 11, CPU will manage PMU by SPMI bus. Here, oh sorry, too fast. SPMI bus, this bus. This bus is to ask PMU to keep provide powers. Okay, so this is almost finished about the boot circuit, but we did not mention this part and this part. So let's take a few seconds to look at this part. This boost IC, as mentioned, is used for boost the voltage when the received PPBTTVCC is between 3 to 3.4 volt. So when the voltage is too low, an enable signal will be sent out from PMU to boost the IC. So after the enable signal received, the boost the IC will form a back circuit with this inductor. Then output the power. Okay, so the outputted voltage can be more than three volt. You can see the note from here which we quoted from the schematics. When we did is less than 3.4 volt, it will boost to 3.4 volt. Otherwise, it just attract the VDD man. Okay. So uh, just summary about this chip is used to extend the battery life of our phones. Okay. And here, there's some lines. 
This line is for battery information. We will talk details in the charging circuit. Here you can have a um, brief view about this part. Okay, you can see. We know the battery information. It will send through the pin two and pin three, send out, and through the two, send through the two lines and send to the PMU CPU. So that CPU can knows how many percent is charged and or how many percent power left. And on these two rails, here's our tip. There's two MOSFET you can see on these rails. On these two rails, Q3200, Q32 and 1. These two MOSFET, uh, because they are for protection and they are in this line. So normally you cannot just remove it or just short it. It's better to do replacement. Okay, so this is the whole process for the boot circuit. And this is our iPhone X boot circuit course today. I hope you enjoy. Our next course will be a detailed explanation of the diagnosis and the maintenance process of iPhone X boot circuit. And we will show you how to fix iPhone X stuck at Apple logo step by step. What boot issues you are most interested in? Please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.